All right, we're going to show you how to do the Freeling Racing Flash using the iBoot system. The iBoot system is for bench flashing, so um, we're going to go through the process to open up the Polaris uh, ECU and show you how to connect in boot mode. So here we have the basic components that we need. We have uh, the ECU, torque wrench to open it up, our bench flash, uh, bungee cable, and of course we'll need the bungee pin. Um, and then we need our master cable, and our master cable is what the has the protocol that allows you to read and write. So <clears throat> we're going to set this thing down here. So the first part is we need to open the ECU. Set. So we get our tools out. Now this ECU has already been opened, so uh, it won't be too hard to pry apart, but typically what you want to do after you get all the different screws off is you want to take a heat gun and go around all the edges, really heat up the outsides because that's where you have the sticky black silicone, and then you want to use putty knives, like flat putty knives, to carefully pry open the ends slowly using a razor blade to slice the black silicone. You want to make sure you don't slip or you don't go in too far because you can damage the circuit board and usually once you damage a board you break off a diode, a capacitor, or scratch a lead that ECU is done. Okay, so you have four screws. Okay, now with the screws out, it's time to open the ECU. Um, since this has already been open, it should uh, come up pretty nicely, but uh, you can see we use the putty knife and go in here and slowly just pry open. the ECU. With the stuff heated up it's a lot easier to open. Sometimes you can use a razor blade and cut the silicone. So now with the ECU open we need to then connect the wires to the front. Follow our diagram. We have two power up top, two ground. Uh, below that five over from the right, can low. Below that five over from the right, can high. And then we have below that four over from the left, power. So what we want to do is take our uh, chip tuning desktop bench flash application tool here and it gives us all the color codes here on the back so we can see that you have reds are 12 volt, blacks are ground, um, can high is yellow, can low is gray, and then there's other ones for different applications. So we want to connect our wires here so we have two power and two ground. So let's connect the power first. And for the top one, since they are a little bit fatter, you'll go ahead and use the uh, <coughs> red and black connectors that have the thicker piece on them.
and now we need to correct can now we need to connect the um, can high and can low uh, can low is gray and that's going to be five over from the top and we have yellow as can high and that will go on the bottom five over from the right below the other one okay and now we have one more red which is going to be four over from the left and now those are all plugged in So our next step is we want to connect the master to our OBD2. And we need to connect our power to our power supply. You want to have a good 12 volt power supply that you can control. So we'll go ahead and connect the red. And the ground. <clears throat> now the boot pin to put the ECU in boot mode is one of these uh, bungee pins, a needle pin. Um, you can pretty much use any type of wire or pin, but these work great to just push right on the position. Now we need to connect the boot pin, and the boot pin needs to be grounded out, so we connect it to an alligator clip here and the, the bungee pin. Um, so we're going to connect this to ground. So we're going to leave the positive <coughs> off because we want to use this to turn the power on and on. We don't want to use the switch. It could put too much volts in there. So we do have everything connected here. So what we want to do is um, turn the power on. We want to locate our boot pin as per the diagram, which on this one is if you're looking at the ECU, it is just to the opposite end of where it says Infineon, right there. So we go ahead and put the boot pin on it, hold it, and connect our power and leave that there. You can see our bench flash tool is now on, which uh, we want to make sure that that power is turned on. And it also says switch can, switch position, switch ignition. Um, all that stuff should be on and the switch can can just leave off at uh, 60. So with that on we launch iBoot and we'll go through the selection here. Now you really only need to leave the boot pin on for 5-10 seconds because now it's in boot mode so you can take the boot pin off leave everything and we can go here and we'll choose TCU 1762 from configuration list. Next. Next. And we have our communication. So we want to choose read memory. We can read both or independently. So we choose processor and hit OK. So we'll go ahead and save the file. We'll just call this test. And we'll hit save. Now if you see this where it's going resetting, cannot accept, then there's there's no, it's not in boot mode, there's no communication. So we need to check our power settings.
our wires, everything, and start the process over. All right, recheck of the wires, and uh, we had one of our can wires on incorrectly. So we want to go back to putting this in boot mode. And we'll turn the power supply on, put the boot pin back, connect our power. Okay, we can remove the boot pin. Now let's go back to our screen and read memory, processor, OK, save. And now we can see that it's reading out the data from the ECU. Now this is the full 1504 kilobytes, full file. The 32 kilobyte is the EEPROM. So if you select to read out the EEPROM and the processor, it's 1536 kilobyte. And now the file's done. So you can then open this up in your editor, make your changes, and once done, you can flash, flash through the iFlash. If you want to flash right back through um, to the ECU, um, if you have a file ready, you don't need to put it in boot mode again because it's still in there unless it's been quite a while and you've turned off your power supply. So you can click program, choose your processor, hit OK, and select your file, whether stock or tuned, and you can program that file back. And you want to make sure before you unplug everything that you turn your power supply off. And turn off your switches here. And that's pretty much it. That's how to do the bench flash with the Polaris ME17.9.74 ECU.